or constraint it is infinite now in each second you must move that's a very important condition that you have to have to move and it's also marked as bold now why the conditions are important is they help you figure out edge cases so please make sure that you mark these conditions and please make sure that you come back to them in the end while figuring out the edge cases now you have to return true if you can reach from this to this uh, finished cell after exactly t seconds now it is not less than t at least it is exactly t so that is another condition that i have to reach at exactly t seconds now or false otherwise a cells adjacent cells are the eight cells so i can move eight cells diagonally so i know that i can move eight cells in all the eight directions i can move and i can also visit the same cell several times which means i can keep on repeatedly visit the same cell so these are the main main conditions which we have to mark in this problem now again just to make sure that uh, um, if it's actually now we just simply take an example very small example now i'm asking you can i go to you in exactly t seconds again but i'm just also asking you i can visit the same cell again and again so if i have let's say these two cells so one thing is for sure if, if this is my start this is my end i ask you hey bro can i reach you in one second he'll say yeah bro for sure you can reach me in one second can i reach you in two seconds he will say yeah bro you can just go down in this cell and then back to the cell you can for sure reach hey bro can i reach you in three seconds he will say bro uh, i think yes which means you will go down you will go right you will go up or there can you other ways also like let's say um, you do you go like right then down and then back up take in many ways okay bro can i reach you in four seconds uh, bro yes why it is always possible to reach because you can visit the same cell again and again so you saw i went to e then i went down then i came back so just to actually increase my time although i could have reached there in just one second but after reaching there in one second still i can just roam around in the nearby locations and in one one step i can just keep on going to any location now let's take a bigger example let's say if i ask you can i can i make you reach here from start to end can i reach you in one second can i reach can i make you reach in one second you will say yeah for sure you can make me reach in one second okay yeah, that's true can i make you reach in two seconds yeah for sure from here and then back to here for, for three again uh one two and three so that is also possible so aryan are you saying that for all cases all times are possible no i'm not saying that let's see uh, so if i have a cell such as like this which is of size 3 cross 3 so if i ask you can i reach you in one second you will say maximum maximum if i travel just diagonally so as to reach you as fast as possible still i will be at here i need at least two seconds to actually reach to end so one second is not possible two is possible now three if i try okay if i have reached this location i'll just go here and then down three is also possible now four if i ask you uh, if i am i am here i'll just go diagonally and then two three and then again four okay so you saw at a point after this it's always possible to reach to the different locations so this kind of format it can it can make you think of binary search too but do we think that binary search actually would be required because in binary search okay you will just land on to this condition that uh, okay i will just try for this mid of time and then i'll just verify if i'm if it's actually possible that this mid of time will help me reach to that location or not which means like what happens in a in a binary search firstly i'm just showing you that the, if you look at the pattern itself it will make you think of okay it's not 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 and then started reachable so it's kind of a pattern of binary search itself so you might think that okay i will i will ch ch check for this mid time and i will see that if it's possible to reach from start to end if it's actually possible to reach from start to end um okay if not then i'll try for the more time now just to check if it's possible to reach from start to end what will you do you know one thing as you were seeing itself that firstly maybe it's an overkill maybe not we don't know so far but we will just try that the what is the minimum time possible to reach from start to end if its coordinate is something its coordinate is something the minimum time possible let's say if the coordinate is sx sy fx fy 
so this distance will actually be nothing but um, fx minus sx now for sure this fx can be in the left side also so please always make sure to take the absolute values so this is the x difference now this is actually maybe the y difference which is like their height and you know one thing for sure if you want to reach in the shortest possible time always travel diagonally so i know one thing that in t equal to 2 which means if i travel only diagonally then i can very fastly reach my end so it's always possible to travel diagonally so it's always beneficial to travel diagonally to reach short the shortest possible time now if that is the case i'll just simply say uh, i'll make a square out of it now the square has been made with this square i know that i can reach in just two steps and if that two if that two which means the time i can reach minimum time if this is less than equal to my mid i am good to go but i am saying like why to find the mid itself you were asked can you reach in let's say t is equals to eight seconds the question will ask you true or false right so i know that i can for sure reach in two seconds and after two i can for sure reach so if my this two is less than my time given time given which is tg then less than equal to my time given less than tg less than equal to tg i am very sure saying okay yeah for sure it's, it's possible for sure it's possible if let's say it was two i again say for sure it's possible if the time given was one sorry bro i need minimum time of two seconds but you are actually taking one seconds i cannot reach there in one seconds even if i take the shortest possible path okay so one thing i got to know that i will travel the shortest possible path i will check what is the time to actually reach there and that is simply traversing diagonally and then i will just make sure that i what's the time i have got it should be less than equal to the time my question requires but aryan is it are you only traversing diagonally uh, will you not traverse in other directions i will say yeah i can traverse in other directions let's see if it is if we want to traverse in other directions also so if you saw the diagonal traversing is only possible in a square matrix one two three four one two three four so you know that you can traverse diagonally in this portion itself so what you will do is you will traverse diagonally 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 but as the square matrix is finished you will have to go and traverse linearly so that is not an option because the square because for sure the square matrix help you to traverse diagonally rest portion is a straight line just so just travel straight line so if we take this example itself two comma four and this cell uh, seven comma seven so you know one thing that you will in the beginning you it's always beneficial to travel diagonally which is and it's marking okay what is my si entire size you will say it is uh, 7 minus 7 minus 4 which is actually 3 so it's a y diff with you which is a y difference the x diff for you is actually here pe 7 minus 2 which is actually a 5 so you know that it's a 5 as you can see 5 blocks 1 2 sorry as you can see 5 blocks 1 2 3 4 4 and 5 right now as i said it's always to, it's always beneficial to travel to travel diagonally so i can just break this x diff as this particular y diff y diff plus remaining which is nothing but x diff minus y diff right now in this common part in this common part it's always beneficial to travel diagonally i know this x diff will also be three because i took same values of y diff and the remaining part will be nothing but x diff minus y diff which is actually 5 minus 3 nothing but 2 so i know that in this portion i will travel diagonally now how to know that for, because i know only these values which is 5 and 3 i know that whatsoever is common will actually help me build a square so i know one thing to build a square i need the x diff comma y diff minimum value that will give me the length of the square and i know the length of the square actually will give me the number of diagonals so okay it is one diagonal it is second it is third so with this minimum value i can get that in that square how many distance i can travel and then the remaining part will be this which is x diff minus y diff x diff minus y diff but here the x diff minus y diff was there because for sure x was more than y but it can be vice versa also which means your y is more than x so please take the absolute value for here also and that will be your final answer which is the minimum number of time to actually reach now if it is less than equal to your tg which we discuss here the time which was given then for sure your answer is a true answer is a true if true like answer is a true if not if not, 
then answer is a false and that's the only condition which you have to see as you will see that you actually took exactly these seconds because you make sure that if you get the minimum possible time then you for sure can just roam around and get the more time and also you also made sure that you are yet that you are using the capability of visiting the same cell again as you were discussing here that i can just roam around in these cells to increase the possible time and I also use the infinite grid concept. How? Because I know that in this, my star was here and was here, but time was, let's say, two. So I had to jump to some other cell, which was not the part of this star to E, but it, it was part of the grid, which is infinite. So I just move, moved back. So I just used that also. Star to end is always used. One thing. Did you use this concept? You must move. Did you use this concept? I'll ask you, did you use this concept? Can you think of any edge case with this concept? Because you thought of edge every cases from the other things which was marked highlighted. But did you think of this? Let's think of this. If I ask you that can you move from start to end in time t equal to 1? You will say for sure Aryan, you can as you discussed previously also, you can move in time t equal to 2. Yeah, you can for sure. If you move here, you just move, let's say you have to move down. So like you move diagonally and then you will move straight up. You will do possible. Oh yeah, it seems like it's always possible as we discussed for more examples also. Cool. If I ask you, both start and end are the same location, are at the same location. Then if I ask you, can you reach there in t equal to 2? Yeah, for sure, Aryan. Why not? I just move out and then I move back in. As simple as that. t equal to 3? Uh, yeah, for sure. I'll move diagonally. I'll just move up and I'll just move back in. Yeah, for sure it's possible. Now I'll ask you, can I reach in t equal to 1? I must move. So I will have to step out. But it's just one second, which means I have my chances lost. I cannot move back in. So in this case, in this case, you will see that no matter what, I would not be able to move out. And that is the case. You will see that it's impossible to actually move out. Now, with this concept, you can actually see that we are actually utilizing the fact that we are actually moving out one step for sure. Cool. Let's quickly jump on the goal and that's the only thing which you have to implement. That's pretty much it. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, let's quickly code. So now uh, let's just code that thing up which we actually discussed here. So for that, uh, firstly, uh, we have to figure out what is the x diff. Now for the x diff, we actually saw that we will just do a absolute again. Take the absolute value because you don't want to go into that negative positives. Uh, take the absolute values and the same you can just do for y diff, which is actually taking again the absolute values. And for that uh, absolute values of uh, again um, fy and sy. Now, when this is done, you know one thing for sure that uh, if you have both of them at the same location. Now, you will just simply say that your x diff is actually a 0 and also your y diff is actually y diff is actually a 0, which means both of these coordinates are at the same location. But we also saw that if the time is equal to 1. So with the condition which we discussed later, it will actually be true, but it is never possible to actually reach here. So I'll just have to have to return a false because it's it's not possible to reach here. Now, I will just have a condition at last in the end that as we discussed, firstly, we'll take the minimum of my x diff comma y diff now for sure if we take the minimum of the x diff comma y diff then uh, ultimately we'll just get the square and we'll traverse in diagonal and then for sure we will take the um, absolute of uh, absolute of x diff comma like x diff minus y diff now with this what you will see is that it should be less than or equal to your time which is given if this is the case then only it will be a true so let's quickly see that if this works yeah it works and we'll just simply get this done now as you will see that this minimum of x diff which is actually your traversing in diagonal and then the absolute value which is the remaining value it will be nothing but you took the initial length right which is you as you show as you saw here the minimum of x diff comma y diff was this part of y diff right and this part is actually this sorry it, it was this part of x diff and and this sorry let's erase this entire fact and 
we are actually saying that this is the like left part of x diff and this is this part of x diff so you saw that i was kind of taking x diff entirely itself right so i i and I, I can just say that okay i'll take the maximum out of x diff and y diff so what i can do is i can simply replace this entire thing with also one thing which is maximum of x diff comma y diff but uh, we did not took it initially because just we have to make sure that we understand the underlying concept. Cool. That was pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Take care. Bye bye.